Hey folks, um, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I posted a video. I've just gotten a sidetrack with too many different things. And today I wanted, I unboxed this um, HHO generator and I wanted to show it to you. So this um, HHO generator cost me $190, which is well worth it. You know, here's my hand for comparison. So you can see it's a big machine and it's very sturdily built, made out of steel. And um, what HHO generators do is they take water and they split it up electrically into hydrogen and oxygen in the form of gas, pass it through a bubbler. This is a bubbler chamber, which can contain water or alcohol, and then force it out through this narrow jet. So you can get very hot flames. So let me just show you how this is set up. It basically comes completely assembled and um, it comes with different sized tips. These are different kind of nozzles for different uh, sized flames. It comes with those. It comes with a plastic funnel. And I'll tell you why you need that in a minute. It comes with an instruction manual. And uh, I'll show you around this thing. So if you look at it here, it's got a big fan on it. You can get them uh, on 220 or 120 volts. And um, the one that I have here is a model h 18 a, and it's known as a, a micro flame polisher. So this one can produce 95 liters of hydrogen and oxygen gas per hour. And it consumes about 35 cc's of water per hour uh, to generate that much hydrogen and oxygen. Now, before, before you um, do anything with this machine, read the instructions. That's the most important thing to do. And that's what I discovered too. Now, once, you, once you've read the instructions, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you, you're gonna to wanna to pour, uh, you're gonna to wanna to use uh, distilled water here and mix that up with, if you take a thousand cc's of distilled water and mix it up between 100 and 150 grams of sodium hydroxide, that'll give you a 10% to 15% solution of sodium hydroxide in distilled water. The reason we're doing distilled water is tap water contains calcium, which can deposit residues on the plates inside this device and reduce its efficiency. And that's why I prefer and recommend you use distilled water. Uh, the plastic funnel is used to pour the sodium hydroxide solution into the device. And I, I made the solution in this jug. Now the solution gets hot once the two, this, once the water and the sodium hydroxide are mixed. So you're gonna to have to wait for it to cool down before you switch this on. And it took about, it took less than one liter to get this to the required level. And here's a level right here. You can see this thing? You want it, you want the water level to between, between these two lines. And that's important. You don't wanna overfill it. Once you've got it, I've got it about up here. Once you've got it to where you want it, this is a chamber, and let me just show you this. It's made of stainless steel. And you can put either distilled water or alcohol in this chamber. I just chose to put alcohol. And you want to fill it up, not above that line there. So I'm using alcohol, but distilled water will also, or any water, in fact, will work fine within this chamber. I've seen some people use mixtures of acetone and methanol, um, but it's personal preference. I'm just using ethanol, because that's what it said in the instruction manual. Now, this machine, uh, before you turn it on, you wanna make sure that, um, that you have this connected. So what this, so, it kind of, so the kit comes with this tubing, this, this flexible plastic tubing, and you can, Place the tubing, this is the out, the gas outlet. You place it on here like that, and then you want to tighten it in position by using this, this nut on here, like that. And then the same thing goes for here. It's got the same setup right there. So you put the tubing on this, on this outlet here. You want to make sure this is closed tighten the knot up, and then it's got a handle here, which you can then screw on, like that. And then when, once that's closed, 
which it, which, it, which it is now, and your electrolyte solution is in place, you want to put the top on right here, like this. Then we're going to switch it on. And what you're going to see on this dial here is the pressure will increase. And when it reaches a certain level, a preset level, the machine will automatically switch off. So you're gonna see that current go way up as it electrolyzes the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So let's go. So you see that current? Now look at that pressure. Now the pressure will increase. Once the pressure reaches a certain critical level, the device is gonna automatically switch off. Now, as that pressure is going up, we're, we're going to just test it to make sure it does switch off. So let's keep it going. There it goes. So it reached a critical level of pressure where it becomes dangerous, so it automatically switches off. Now we're going to light the generated hydrogen and oxygen. Now you'll see that as I open this nozzle, the pressure starts to go down and you can hear bubbling in the chamber. You could probably barely hear that bubbling. I'm gonna light this. Getting it going initially because there's air in the, in, the, in the chamber as well, which has to be displaced and the air is not flammable. So once all the air is displaced out of the tubing and the chamber, we should get a flame. You can barely see that flame. Now we're starting to get hydrogen and oxygen in there. And I'm gonna increase it slightly. This flame, the little bit of yellow tinge in the flame is due to the presence of sodium from the sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna burn some metal with it. We're gonna try and melt this piece of steel. So here goes, I'm gonna get a really longer flame. Oops, it goes out if you turn it too high, as you can see there. So you can't turn it up too high. See if we can melt this in half. There it goes. It's gonna drip, so I better be careful. It'll splash all over the floor. So. Just shows you how hot this thing is. Look at it. Over here, we have some soap. I'm going to make some bubbles in the soap and then I'm going to pop them and show you that how combustible they are. So here goes, we'll make a bunch. Here goes, let's pop them with this stove lighter. Oh my God. Are you okay? Are you okay? The 
very, very highly explosive mixture, as you can see there. Now we're going to try heating this thick piece of copper. This is quarter inch. Now, we've got much more energy here. Look how long the flame is. When you're done using it, you want to burn off all the extra gas in it. So what I'm doing is just turning the flame on and watching the pressure drop. Once the pressure's dropped sufficiently, then you want to turn the flame off and then you can undo the top there to vent any residual gas. So I'm, I'm going to do that right now. And let's see what my pressure is. It's not focusing real well, but you can see it dropping fairly rapidly with the flame. Okay, my flame is almost out, so I'm gonna just turn this off. For release, you just basically open that. And you, it's better to leave that a little loose like that, and I'll tell you why, because when this device is in operation, the solution and the gas above it within this chamber gets hot. And with that closed, what would happen is, as the gas cools down, it would contract, and then it would suck the alcohol that's in this bottle back into the device. And uh, it would mix, it would contaminate the uh, electrolyte solution in here with alcohol, which would shorten the life of the solution. And also it would mean you'd have to top this up a lot. So you don't have to unscrew this, just leave that sort of loose, so there's no suck back as it cools down. And I, I discovered that last night because I noticed my alcohol level had gone down slightly. Well, there you go, uh, folks. Thanks a lot. And I do appreciate you uh, checking out this video. And I do plan on making um, future videos, hopefully more, more often than I've, done, than I've been doing. But I'm very pleased with this and I think it was well worth the money. I did consider constructing one of my own machines and uh, Nighthawk and Light has done that one done a home construction that's very economical and I recommend you check out his channel but when I looked at all of the uh, the time the time factor and the fact that I wouldn't be able to operate it safely this has a safety mechanism because of the pressure cutoff I decided it was probably better to just buy this so you can check this out on eBay and I'll leave a link up where you can get these but that's the basics on it folks and uh, do appreciate you checking in and Thanks a lot, and I do hope to post some more videos in the up and coming future.